possibility of merging layers in the application, enhanced vignette tool, and new and improved way to organize and sort your presets in the presets module. Those are just some of the new features and enhancements coming with the latest Luminar Neo update with the number 1.23. As you probably noticed, Luminar Neo is celebrating its third anniversary. And to add to the celebration, Skylum has managed to add one more update with that number 1.23. Now with this update, I also celebrate a little anniversary of 40 update and news video I have produced for you guys to make sure that you keep up to date with all the latest news about this application. Now looking back, especially at the beginning, three years ago, I have to say that some of the first videos were a little bit tricky, because as you probably know, the application wasn't where it was supposed to be. But looking at it today with all the creative possibilities, I think it's an incredible tool that we all love. Anyway, in today's video, we're going to look at all the updates and features coming with this update together with some of the offers connected with the third anniversary. Talking about the updates, let's start with my favorite feature of this update, and that's the possibility of merging the layers in the application. Up till now, if you wanted to merge layers, you actually had to export the image and then bring it back into the application and continue from there. So that is now over. We can merge the layers in the application. So let's look at this example right here. We have this model with very plain and basic background. First thing we would do, just remove the background using the background removal AI. Very quickly, adjust the mask. And once ready, bring it back and replace the background. Stretch it adjust it, and once ready, just very quickly apply a little bit of the color grading using the Color Match tool. Once finished with that, what I would do next, I would merge the layers so I can apply global adjustments to blend everything together. So as I mentioned, up till now, we had to do that by exporting the image, where now all we need to do is to select the layer then hold Command or Control and select the second layer. And once both of the layers are selected, then we can right click on the layers and choose Merge Layers. Once we're going to do that, we will get a new prompt saying that the application is merging the layers. The length of the merging will depend on how many layers you are merging together. Once finished, it will place the new Merge Layer on the top of your current layers. So as you can see, it, it's already here. Now what you can do, you can remove or you can just hide the layers below or keep them there. It's up to you. What I like to do is just to right click on them, select hide layer. And that way, if I need to go back to them, I can do that again. So now about the merge layer, very simply, you can continue with the edit and apply some global adjustments, like for example, a vignette tool, bringing it down, or maybe little enhanced AI. So it's just that simple. Select the layers using Command or Control, right-click on the layer, and choose Merge Layers. Now, before we look at the update for the vignette tool, here is a quick reminder that we have joined the anniversary celebration with our own special promotion. Starting today until the 23rd of February, you can visit our website and purchase any of our Luminar Neo tools with a special price. The discounts go up to 50%, so if you ever wanted to get one of our Luminar Neo products, then for the next four days until the 23rd of February, it's the best time to do that. To access this special sale, simply follow the link in the description of this video or head to our website, cleverphotographer.com. And with that, it's time to look at the vignette tool and the update there. We are in Luminar Neo in the edit module. We have this lovely landscape capture ready. So let's go into the editing toolbar, open the vignette tool. And here, what we're going to do, we're going to start by bringing the amount down. 
I'm going to overdo it so you can see it. And let's do somewhere around minus 80. Now I have the advanced settings open, but if you don't, you can just click on that. And we have a new option here called mode. By default, it's set to post crop. However, when you click on it, you will see that there are two options. One is post crop and one is pre crop. So basically now you can choose which of the following will the vignette follow. So with the post crop selected, if I now close the vignette tool and go ahead and crop the image. So let's say we're going to choose four on five, then click on apply. The vignette will follow the new crop. So it will readjust. So when I go back to edits and adjust the vignette, you will notice that it follows the new crop. If I now reset the image, so let's do that. Go back to the tools, again, open the vignette, add a lot, again, somewhere around minus 70. And instead of post crop, I will select the pre crop. The vignette will remain the same regardless if I'm going to crop the image or not. So let's do that. Let's go and close the vignette tool, select the crop, choose again four on five. And in this case, I will actually crop it on a side here. So let's do that and select apply. By doing that, you will see that the side of the vignette remains here. However, it does not reapply on this side of the image. So either of the options will be suitable or available for different scenarios. And I think it's a great thing that you can actually choose. So again, going into the vignette, applying it. When you go into the advanced settings, into the mode, you can choose between post crop. And this way, the vignette will adjust anytime you crop the image or pre crop where the vignette will remain same regardless of your crop. Now moving on and looking at Luminar Neo and your camera, there are a few different updates. One of them is the fact that now you can rate or add stars to your images in camera. And when you then import them into Luminar Neo, that rating will transfer through. So just like you can see on the screen now, I have a number of images here, which I have previously rated in my camera and the rating remains. You can see that I have added two stars, three stars, three stars and five stars here. If you can't see the stars, what you need to do is to navigate to the top of your screen where there is the second option, this little drop down box. When you click on it at the bottom, there is an option between detailed view and minimal view. When you go for the minimal, all these stars disappear and they will only be available and accessible when you hover over the image, which is fine. It's not very distracting. However, if you're looking for the stars and the rating, go for the detailed view. And also don't forget that you can click on the drop down box next to it where you can sort your images by rating. So again, back to the stars, depending how you organize your images, you can select to sort them by the rating you have choose on your camera earlier. Talking about cameras, this version of Luminar Neo brings new support for cameras from Fuji, Nikon, Panasonic and Sony. And on the top of it, this version also brings an update to the lens profiles. And now it's time to look at the presets and the new possibilities of organizing them in the presets module. Now, I want to make sure I don't forget anything. Anyway, we are in Luminar Neo in the presets module. And from here, the first thing you can see is the recently added section. This section will show the recently added preset collections. From here, you can very quickly access them just by clicking on them. And you can also add them to your favorites with the use of this little hard icon, add or remove. So that's the first thing. After that, when you go into each of the sections like favorites, my presets and purchase, you will notice that on the top you can see the count of the collections or the presets collections. So you can see in my purchase section, I have 28 preset collections. Now, important thing here or new possibility is to actually remove the collection. How to do that? Well, very simply, you right click on the collection and select delete collection. Now be careful here. Once you delete it, it's a little bit difficult to recover it. But I know that some of you are looking for this possibility. So it's here now. Since we already here in the purchase section next to the 
count of the collections, we also have now the possibility to sort the collection or sort the section. You can sort the preset collections by name and also based on when you added them. So it's up to you. I personally would probably select the collection name. I would really like that. Now, once you do that, don't forget that you can also choose between ascending and descending based on what you prefer. Or you can go back to your recently added. Now, going back, let's go into my presets section where you have the presets you have created yourself here in Luminar Neo. So same thing, we have a count there, but this time it tells us how many presets we have in this section. So I have 22 presets here. Again, next to it, we have the possibility to sort the presets, but compared to the purchase section, here we can actually choose custom order. So what it means, you now can actually drag the presets and sort them yourself based on what you need, which I think is super cool. So you can just take the presets and move them around. If you make a mess out of it, go back to the same icon and select recently added or maybe again preset name. And again, don't forget to select how exactly you want to sort them. Back again and one more section here, the favorites, where you know now you have a favorite presets as well as collections. Similarly to the previous section, you can now drag the presets around which is really cool. You can sort them the same way like the previous section. And with the collections, the same thing. You can actually drag the collections around. So for example, you can keep the collections which are for different time of the year or different project at the bottom, like for example, the autumn month here. And then you can just move them around as you need them. Just to mention again, there is that count for the preset collections and there is the possibility to sort the preset collections using the same button. Now, before we're going to finish, let's look at the current offers and deals connected with the third anniversary. So if you're thinking about getting Luminar Neo or if you're a current user, here is the update. So for new users, if you're going for the subscription, you can get one year of Luminar Neo with 100 creative assets, free Luminar Neo video course, three months extra of the subscription, so 12 and 3, 15, for just $69. So with my calculations, that goes to $4.60 each month for 15 months, which is a great price. I mean, a cup of coffee for this incredible software. Now, if you do prefer to get a lifetime license, then you pretty much get the same, the software, 100 assets, free Luminar Neo video course, three years of generative AI tools for $119. So that's for new users. If you, just like me, a returning user or existing user, you have a two options with the third anniversary. One is to get the upgrade pass for the generative tools. That is for $33. And the second one, if you're planning to upgrade to subscription, you can get it for year for $33. And just like the new users, you will get that three months extra. So 15 months for $33. So if you want to access these offers, then follow the link in the description of this video and make sure that you use our discount code CPNEO10 to get an additional 10% off of the prices I just mentioned. Now, regardless if you're new user or existing user, this channel is the place to be. We have a video for every single tool in the application, which will help you to make sure that you don't get stuck and continue pushing your editing skills further.